Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks uh, for inviting me here. Uh, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is tough to be the last speaker because everyone is waiting to go back to go home. So I'm not going to keep you long. I will talk fast, and my short my presentation is short. Uh, FrameCAD. It's a New Zealand-based company, and I'm going to show you a slide. We have offices actually in. Uh, probably five continents. Uh, we have one in the US, uh, one close here in Dubai, South Africa, Australia, China, and, and of course the headquarters is in, uh, in uh, Auckland, New Zealand. It's about 30 year old company, but the technology actually, it's roughly about 50 year technology. So it's not new technology. It is new to the uh, developing uh, countries. It's been used, widely used in the US, uh, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, it started penetrating uh, the third world countries and developing countries and emerging markets, I would say in the past 10 to 15 years. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, construction that's going on in the Gulf region, Dubai and Abu Dhabi and Saudi Arabia and Qatar and so forth, as well as in South America and Southeast Asia. Uh, Surprisingly, actually, China is one of our biggest markets, although they are one of our biggest competitors, but it's still one of our biggest markets. Uh, the technology itself, again, it's, it's uh, steel-based. You know, everyone knows that steel is the most recycled and recyclable material in the world. So when it comes to environmental-friendly or environmentally responsible material, steel is, is the answer. All right, so again, we're going to talk about... Uh, light gauge steel, and one of the questions that anyone would ask is, you know, what is it? What is it? Why do I need it? Uh, you know, if, if we've been building with using the traditional construction methods for probably thousands of years, why change now? Well, the answer is simple. If we look at the traditional method that we've been building with, it is slow. Everyone knows that. It takes, you know, I mean, I don't think you could fin finish any, any, any project whether it's a, it's a house, school, villa, whatever it is, in less than a year, probably. So you need something more fast, you need something durable, you need something manufacturable, you need something environmentally friendly, and so forth. And earlier, someone said here that we want to create mi a million jobs over the next few years. Well, if you want to create those jobs, you need houses, you need schools, you need hospitals. How are you going to accommodate that? How are you going to do that? If you're going to do it the traditional method, there's no way you could do it. So these are some of the problems that we, we already know. We've known that for, for many, many years, but actually nobody came forward with a solution because everyone is, feels comfortable building and designing and doing it the way we've always done it. And someone else mentioned earlier that resistance to change is always an issue. So what do we do? Where do we go from here or what it is? The light gauge steel frame st steel frame technology or the technical name for it is actually is cold form steel it's not it is a disruptive technology but it's not going to displace or replace the existing technologies so we'll, we'll continue to build with hot rolled steel we'll continue to build with concrete and block and timber and so forth but there is a place where light gauge steel would be ideal uh, in the construction market. And that's, this is where we are going, whether it's housing, whether it's uh, schools, clinics, hospitals, uh, commercial buildings, mid-rise buildings, and so forth. These are the perfect applications for light gauge steel frame. So what we've done, FrameCAD, which I work for, they took an old technology and they automated it. So they made this technology you know, they brought it up from the 1940s or 50s into the 21st century. And the way we did that is we took the manufacturing, the design, the engineering, the detailing, the shop drawing, the erection, the site, uh, the services, the parts, the after service support and so forth, and we combined it into one system. So when we provide you the system, we provide you with all of that. We don't just you know, give you a machine or give you a soft piece of software and tell you, you know, you're, you're in your own. Now, we, we take you, it's an end-to-end -end solution. We take you from point A to point Z unless you are, you, until you start producing and uh, successful in this technology. 
So what is this technology or how does it start? It starts, it's easy. It starts with a concept, a picture. You know, if you draw something in the back of a napkin, uh, an AutoCAD drawing, someone mentioned earlier this morning they use AutoCAD, uh, uh, Rivet drawing, whatever you have, you take it through our design engineering software. It designs it, analyzes it, and spits it out to the manufacturing equipment, which is the machine. So everything gets done electronically. The machine produces every part of that building or of that structure, cut to length, exact tolerances, you know, this exact length, everything's measured, everything is uh, labeled, so there is no room for, for error at all. Once that gets done, then your factory guys, they assemble it together, all they have to do is assemble, and then ship it to the job site, if you, and if, or if you're doing it at the job site, do the erection, and then uh, the building goes up. You put the applications, uh, the finishes, and so forth, and I'm gonna show you some pictures on that. So I mentioned earlier FrameCAD, we have, uh, this is where we are, we, we have actually over, you know, this is an old slide, we have over 80 countries, we are in over 80 countries, we have over 600 factories worldwide. We are the largest, we do have competitors like everyone else, and we do actually understand that we, we need to have competitors so they could keep us on our toes because we, we don't want to slack off. We always want to be ahead of the technology. Uh, so that's where we are. The process itself, it's easy. It starts with getting steel from the steel mill, which I understand there are steel mills here in, in Pakistan. So the coils come from the steel mill. They get slitted, and uh, the slit coils, they get recoiled, and their coils are sent to the machine, which is, you see on the left, uh, bottom left corner. The machine actually rolls the sections or bends them to shape. It's mainly a C-shape, could be a C-shape or U-shape, Z-shape, but it's mainly a C-shape uh, cold form steel. And then the machine produces the sections, like I mentioned earlier, cut to length and it fits exactly where it's supposed to fit. So there's no way to make a mistake because if you try to fit it somewhere else, it will not work. Once the machine produces the sections, then your factory guys, your laborers, they assemble it together. Once it gets assembled, you stack it, you ship it to the job site, unless you have the machine on the job site. While, while they're doing that in the factory, you could be doing your foundations. Foundations, whether it's a mat foundation, strip footings, piles, depending on your, your, your soil. Most people, what they use they, is they use uh, uh, the, uh, the footings, concrete footings, perimeter footings. Then you assemble the frame, that's uh, framed. You see that actually in the front cover of the brochure. That's your floor system. Insulation. In, uh, cladding, infill, whether it's gypsum board, cement board, etc. You put the uh, jointing finishes, finishing work, and that's, you're done. So it's simple. The process itself is very simple. Once you do it once, it's repeatable and it's scalable. So, you know, if you do one here, you could do 10, you could do 20, you could do 50, you could do 100. And uh, the machine itself can produce roughly about, about 60,000 square foot, if in one shift, 60,000 square foot a month. So if, uh, that's assuming eight hour shift, five days a week, 80% uh, efficiency. So if you want more, of course, you could work double shifts work triple shifts and so forth. We do have clients uh, throughout the world that works 24 hours a day. So the applications, I'm gonna show you here from here on a lot of pictures that have been done by our agent and partner here, PEBI. Uh, they've done a lot of schools, a lot of uh, hospitals and clinics and so forth in, uh, in Pakistan. And I'm gonna show you photos that were done by other, of our, other clients around the world. This is a data facility center in uh, Sindh, 27,000 square foot. Another recycling build, uh, sorry, revenue building, the Board of Revenue building in Hyderabad. Schools, 250 schools in the KPK region. 
That's a very nice uh, location for a school. Captain Hot Hawks Bay, Karachi. Uh, DHQ Hospital, 200,000 square foot, and this is a, a hospital complex, including the whole thing you see in front of you here. And this is a picture during construction. Just different shots of the same project. They also have uh, doctor's accommodations and quarters and so forth. Another school. So you can see it's a perfect application for public buildings, whether schools, hospitals, clinics. Extensions. You can see here, you know, if you already have a one story or two story or whatever number of story building and you want to go up, light gauge steel actually weighs probably 70% less than concrete or less than brick. So you could easily go up without impacting the structural integrity of the building. So you don't have to go and strengthen the columns or the slab or beams or whatever because it's extremely light. And you could duplicate the same exact architectural features like the existing building. So uh, extensions is a very popular application for light gauge steel. And you can see here, they duplicated the same exact architectural features. You could combine light gauge steel with hot roll steel or with concrete. You know, you don't have to do the whole structure out of light gauge steel. You use light gauge steel where it makes the most sense. If it makes more sense to combine it, it's great. If it makes more sense to build it with, with light gauge steel, the entire building, it's great. This is a combination with RCC frames, reinforced concrete. Now in other regions, in other countries, portables. It's a big market for portable construction because it's light. So you could build it and you could chip it. It's very light to move it around. Pods, very popular in countries like India. See a lot of pods. What, what the government does is they build these kiosks and they put them on the streets for people to have jobs, cell, cell phone, mobile phones, or hot dog sandwiches, whatever. So it's a very popular method of employing people because these things don't cost much. Warehouses. I mean, this is a big warehouse in Africa, in Botswana. Apartment buildings, Qatar. You know, it's close by here, of course, uh, you know, three, four story buildings. They, this is actually, most of the time, that's what you see in the, in the Gulf area. You see three or four story buildings, although you have nine, 10 story buildings that have been built around the world. The first one on the left hand side, actually, it's a Holiday Inn Hotel in Seattle, in Washington, in, uh, Washington State was built in 1999. That was the first building that was built with light gauge steel, nine levels. And it went through two earthquakes and still there. Another building in Iran, nine story building, all light gauge steel. And uh, one of the biggest advantages, which we'll get to in a second, Iran is, is, a, is a high seismic region. There's a lot of earthquakes, same as Turkey or west, the western side of the US, parts of, uh, of, uh, of Pakistan here. And, so steel, it's, it's actually the answer for uh, earthquake-prone areas. Steel is very ductile, it dissipates energy fast, easy. So during an earthquake, if it shakes after the earthquake is done, it goes back to its original shape. Mid-rise buildings in the US. There is a case that was done by Dr. Bilal at, at uh, Nast University, and actually, the only thing I want to show you here is they compared, actually, they did a lot of comparison. Uh, the one I want to show you here is, you look at the reinforcement, the tonnage in the reinforcement between light gauge, if they use light gauge steel, 
or if they use the traditional construction material. So there is a savings. Same thing if you look at the base shear. If, uh, if you're an engineer and you want to calculate the base shear due to the earthquake forces, you can see that the base shear has been reduced because of the material's light. And I'm sure the, the paper is available somewhere at the university. Uh, some of the comparison chart that you see here, you know, again, we could, we could spend the whole day on this, but the main one that I want to bring up is the speed. And although here I put that it's 50% faster, but in reality it's a lot, more, uh, a lot faster than that. I mean, I've seen uh, clients around the world, they do buildings in one month and two months, not one year and two years. They've done recently a project in Abu Dhabi, 410 villas. Each one is about 200, 250 square meters. They've done the whole project in six to nine months. So, you know, there's no way you could do that project using brick or block or any of the traditional building materials. So, again, comparison, it, it shows you the advantages between and disadvantages between light gauge steel and traditional construction methods. And uh, without going through the whole thing, I mean, it's... Uh, you know, straightforward, I summarized some of the key strengths uh, for light gauge steel. And if you look at it, speed of construction is, is the most important one. The second most important one, in my opinion, is it is manufacturable, it is durable, it's affordable, and it's energy efficient. Some of you talked about environmental and green and, and, and the, the, uh, the issues with the environment and so forth. And... I don't think, again, there's any material that comes close in the recycled content or the re recyclability better than steel does. It's 100% recyclable. Actually, in today's market, we cannot make new steel without old steel. And some of the steel mills, actually, they, the recycled content is as high as 75 or 80, 80%. I don't think any construction market gets either, either, even close to doing that. So... Recyclability is important. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, the, the other things is local labor and local material. I mean, you, you know, with this system, you, could, you, you tend to use local labor, and you use local material as much as possible. Uh, you don't have to go outside and, and import new material. So it encourages you to start manufacturing your own finishing system, whether it's a cement board, magnesium board, uh, plywood, OSB, whatever it is. So it, it pushes the industry to use, uh, to start manufacturing processes to, so that you could use your own labor and your own material. Uh, the existing production capacities of uh, PEBI, which I mentioned earlier, they are our uh, partner and agent here in, in Pakistan. They have four CNC machines, so they could do up to five tons per machine per day. And to put that in perspective, a typical uh, hundred, let's, let's make it a little bit smaller. The typical 100 square meter house, you know, let's say two levels, it's usually it's about seven tons of steel. So you could do one of these in one machine in a day. So imagine how much you can produce in a week or in a month or in six months and so forth. And they have four of them. So they have very high capacity and they could scale up or down depending on the size of the project and depending on the demand and depending on of course, the client and, and so forth. And that is the end of my presentation. Like I promised, I'm going to make it easy, fast, and sweet.